Welcome to Supercars Today TV, installment number two. And I was informed on the last one that I'd introduce myself. Shame on me. I'm Kevin Schwarzy. Thank you for tuning in today. And for our second installment, we have the venerable, legendary <laughs> star of I don't know how many NASCAR divisions, ARCA, USAC, late models, Grand American, you just keep going, and, and this guy's one in them. Joe Rubman, thank you, sir, for uh, joining us here. I really appreciate it. It's, it's great to be here, and uh, especially in a nice, cool environment. You know, so I'm ready for this. As the, as the Florida resident and the Detroit residents know, the weather is a little different. And uh, <laughs> just leading up into this, that was Prep and Barium. That music that we let in with was uh, by Kyle Harvey and... Thank you, Kyle, for giving us that music as uh, we led into the show here. <clears throat> I think it's just safe to say you were uh, born into racing royalty as your brother Troy was the 1952 Indy 500 winner. Maybe talk about him a little bit. Well, growing up, I'm mean, naturally uh, going to the races uh, out on the West Coast, and that's I was born and raised in Southern California. So the family went to the races, you know, the whole family went to the races. And uh, so automatically I become, didn't take long to become a race fan. And uh, needless to say, Troy was my hero. Always has been, you know, his his habits weren't always the best, but I tried to want to emulate his driving talents, not some of his other talents. But uh, it was, you know, fabulous, I had a fabulous, upbringing because the family was behind him 110 percent fast forward to when i come along they were behind me 100 percent and that leads me to my next question <clears throat> who would you say set you on that path troy the family jim no troy did because you know the family followed troy my father was the uh, mechanic uh, not by choice by demand from my mother <laughs> uh, because when he stole the first car that they had and went out and raced it, uh, my dad had a fit because that was his that was his private car, you know, that he drove and he Troy raced it. And uh, but he come back and said, "Oh, yeah, I won!" And it won. I think as the number was nine dollars. But my dad went ballistic, and Mama goes after he stopped bouncing around. Uh, she says, "Well." Ralph, he, he, by trade, he was a good mechanic. And she said, you're going to build him his own car. You're going to build his, his own car. And, uh, and you're going to take care of it. And uh, they, have, they resolved that behind me. But So fast forward all the races up to 1952, 95% of the races you saw Troy in, my father was a mechanic on the car, crew chief or mechanic. Wow. Uh, didn't fabricate him, but uh, but anyway, he was a crew chief, and uh, so he he was a mechanical side of it. Troy was the driver side of it. Wow. <clears throat> now, like you say, you were born and raised in uh, California, but you've got a lot of deep roots in the Detroit, Michigan area. Rubman Cycle Shop, we were talking about on Ford Road there a little bit, and, uh, you know, racing with Fair and Harold, uh, uh, Danny Bird and... and uh, Harold Fair, sure. guys like that. Um, Dick Mitchell. Dick Mitchell. Everyone feared him off the track more than on. Right, right. For fear he might, I don't know what he'd do to Hurt you. Hurt you physically. <laughs> right. Is that what that is? Okay. <laughs> but go ahead. But um, <clears throat> you're, you're still known from up in California. So would you say your roots are the Detroit area or California? Well, you're born and raised somewhere. And, and uh, I was probably, I went to Big Bear, which is close to Southern California, and you'd see a void of snow on the ground. But technically, where we lived in uh, Ontario, Upland, um, it flurried a little bit, but I never saw enough to really cover the grass. So I had no idea what winter was like. <laughs> and fast forward, you know, with my father, my father, uh, was with my brother up till 52. He, he won the, in the Indy in 52. My father was a crew chief on the car. Troy got hurt at Cedar Rapids, Iowa, broke his arm. The following year, he was unable to get back and race. 
and uh, so my father was obviously still there waiting for him to recover. He was a crew chief for Art, Art Cross uh, at Indy, and the, the car got second. So, so fast forward the next year, my mother's going, well, obviously he, he's won the Indy 500. He can do without you. So uh, a fellow by the name of Harley Thanks Cop. For, thanks for the confidence boost. Right. <laughs> Fast forward with a gentleman, uh, Harley Cop was his name, and he was a higher up with uh, Ford Motor Company. He'd come along and, and, and said, I'll, I'll hire your husband uh, to go to uh, Detroit in a Dearborn, really. And uh, he, he was employed there, and that, so he moved the rest of the family, and that's how I ended up. He was a... Uh, engineer for engine driveline in Ford Motor Company, and so that's fast forward that the they he they then mother and father moved the family to Durban Heights technically, but uh, and that's what got me to the Detroit area. You're watching Supercars Today TV with our guest Joe Rutman, and we're here at the Daytona International Speedway. I'd like to thank those folks for giving us this room and this uh, hospitality to uh, do this broadcast. <clears throat> It almost seemed as if you were destined to be in yellow race cars your whole life, uh, including that special one from Pontiac, Michigan. Maybe talk about those. The, your car was always yellow. Ferris car would seem to be. Ferris car was always yellow. And well, you had so much success uh, in those yellow cars. Well, I think, you know, I admired his whole team, and I admired him personally, uh, Joey. And obviously... That's why I wanted to paint the cars yellow. Now, I could never find the ugly yellow that he painted his, but I would get what I we thought. We won't say he stole it off of the local school district. Right. I, I heard that later. <laughs> but I, for some reason, I could never find that color, but I painted it yellow uh, because I wanted to be, first, it was my brother Troy, because backing up just a little more, I wanted to be what they call open wheel racer, not uh, the open wheel guys call the NASCAR guys, taxi cab drivers, right. because they got doors. Uh, so I wanted to be uh, Indy car drivers, midget sprint cars. But and we were just talking with a good friend of mine, Peter, from from my hometown now, which is Northport, Florida. And uh, I said, you know, I never ever drove. I've watched hundreds and hundreds of races, and can imagine myself how good I was going to be if I drove a sprint car or a midget or whatever. I knew how great I was going to be. I never drove one, ever. <laughs> I wanted to drive a quarter midget prior to that. Never, I just got too big on a quarter midget. But somehow I got, when, I, when we moved to the Detroit area, uh, it was the only thing there was stock cars, you know. So that's how I got into stock cars and admired some fellow named Joy Fair. Well, perhaps tell us now a little bit about your... Uh 1980 USAC Stock Car Championship and your dominance at the Milwaukee Mile. Uh, that's still talked about today on social media. Well, it, it is, but I, the one thing I want to make clear to everybody, and I learned real fast, that uh, you're only as good as your equipment. And uh, when you see a fellow winning in NASCAR, ARCA, uh, you know, USAC, you got to look beyond him a little bit and you look at the car the crew because i tell everyone if you thought you were the world's greatest jockey and they took you to the kentucky derby and put you on a mule you're not going to win okay i don't care how great a jockey you are but you're not going to win so consequently i had a good car uh spent tremendous amounts of money had a tremendous amount of people backing me financially and without that the usec uh success would have never happened would you say the USAC success uh, led you into uh, driving people like Austerlin and Stacy and Benfield and McClure obviously not Stropey that was 1963 but uh, <laughs> uh, Bernstein Mock and Ray Hilly you know you've driven for the Petties the Yates is uh, Roush you know Bobby Hamilton I mean you've driven and, and a guy named Inman you've driven for oh, some pretty big names the greatest man in the world uh, Dale I, Inman he's talking about, folks. Kenneth Dale, by the way. Very few people <laughs> know that for a fact. I took me a while to learn it. A little quick story about him, sidelight to all this. Uh, when I first, he was my crew chief when I come down here for J.D. Stacy, 
and after however many races it was, three or four or two or whatever, he uh, he walked up to me and didn't say anything to me, which I wish I had today. He presented me with a watch. Now it wasn't a Rolex or something like that, but I understood why he gave me that watch was maybe that I was not timely enough. <laughs> and I would today, if I could get that, I'd pay a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar for that watch because that's a kind of a sentimental thing that it somehow got away uh, and meant the world to me. And Dale, I didn't realize I had the best crew chief there was in NASCAR and didn't understand it. You're listening to and watching Supercars Today TV. And uh, just want to make a shameless plug here. We have this book available. The uh, My Name is Joy Fair book, Stories from an uh, American Racing Legend, which uh, I could say Joe and I wrote this, I guess, because Joy did the intro. And uh, <laughs> this would be for sale. Just a comment leave some comments in our uh, comments section uh, when you see this video and we appreciate you watching here if you, you if you enjoy racing he's my he was my hero when i started and uh, he never told me i got the chance to drive the car which you're familiar with and uh, the book finally he wouldn't tell me personally but the book kind of indicated to me what he thought as me as a driver not a lot but uh, he, 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 they, they did vote and we were discussing that earlier they made a vote uh, collectively of all the owners of that particular car and I, I'm sure Joy was not one that voted in my favor but that, did, that didn't affect our friendship so read the book well I appreciate the plug and uh, I will say one thing Fair said about yourself is that uh, he said that one night he let you beat him, and so he said the crew was very angry with him and made him load the car. <laughs> so I don't know if you I don't know if you remember that story from the book. Yeah, right. I mean, he uh, uh, one of the times was Owasso, Michigan, and uh, was that dirt at that time? Or it was, it it was paved. Room? You know, I didn't run the dirt very much. I I understood. I fast forward in my career a little bit. Uh, I found real fast that it they have a lot more specialty in dirt racing than they do in pavement. The asphalt doesn't change during the race, but dirt racing does. And, and when I got the opportunity to race a, a few times with a fellow from Detroit named Stan Yee, which was kind enough to give me a car that was a super car that he raced on dirt. Uh, it was unfortunately but, passed away a couple of years ago. In the... Uh, and I didn't get a chance to personally thank him for giving me the opportunity to drive the car. I mean, I did thank him, but the world, first World 100, he took me down there and uh, toward El Doro, and uh, and I looked and and I said, Stan, I, I don't race the dirt. And I looked down in that bowl, and there was a hundred cars down there, you know, because <laughs> I was paying a lot of money. And fast forward, he goes. I know what it takes. And I says, you better, because I don't know what it takes. Because <laughs> when you go to driver's meetings and they, the good old boys from uh, Kentucky, northern, uh, southern Ohio, Iowa, Pittsburgh, they you look at that dirt. and the best the best. And they look at that dirt and go, they dig their toe in it and go, it's going to dry out in 20 laps. It's going to dry <laughs> out. And, and they go, I need an O2 tire and grooved or not grooved and I went right then and there in that driver's meeting that I, I shouldn't be here <laughs> and I was lucky enough to get really really proud uh, to get second in the first world 100 and um, had I had a little more experience understanding the great car I was driving I should have won <laughs> driving air okay uh, but anyway uh, good times from everyone in the Detroit area that I've, I've driven for a lot of good people and been fired by a lot of good people. <laughs> but I just keep looking at that one sucker that hasn't given me a chance to drive. And I, I'm, I still carry my, my phone around with me just waiting for it to ring. And it, it has, in recent years, it has not rang. So I haven't had that chance to. You unfortunately now get your phone ringing from people like myself. Hey, come and do an interview. Right. And then your neighbor <laughs> right. Pete, who is in attendance today, <laughs> right. gets to hear these stories again and again and again. But uh, we're, uh, we're uh, I think, in the uh, 
well, I don't want to say in I don't want to say inebriated state, but <laughs> the, the straight stories today. <laughs> right. Well, this is the end of the first segment of Supercars today with Joe Rutman, and uh, we appreciate you watching. And uh, please tune back in for segment two, and uh, we'll be right back.